just what he said. Everything he promised you, he's going to fulfill. Every word over your life. Hey, don't give up. worship the Lord. Come on and worship the Lord. Come on and worship him because he is able. We serve a God 
that is able to do everything. We serve a God that has never taken a loss. We serve a God that has never had to say, my bad, my mistake. We serve a God who knows all. They were literally singing Ephesians 3 and 20. And it says, our God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. But a lot of times we stop there. But it says, according to the power that worketh within. So it's not even on me to make it work. It's on him to make it work. I just got to... I just got to walk in his power and his grace. I got to walk in his power and his grace. It's he who makes it run. And that's something we ought to go into 2022 with. It's he who makes it run. God gave me a couple of years ago about Adam. He said prior to the fall of man, the Bible says that Adam had to tend the garden. And what tending simply meant was Adam could pull off what he wanted and God produced more. It's not tending like we know it to work the ground. And the reason I know that's true is because when they fell, he had to work the ground. So he had to tend the garden. He could pull off whatever he wanted and it, God would reproduce what was needed. But when they fell, he had to now toil the earth. So God asked me, do you want to tend or do you want to toil? If you want to toil, do it in your power. That's why so many marriages break down because the husband or the wife is just working crazy hours because I got to make this money. I got to do this. I got to do that. But what if I say, God, you know what? This belongs to you. So I'm going to tithe out of obedience. God, I'm going to be faithful to my spouse out of obedience. God, I'm going to serve your house out of obedience. So now all I got to do is just team. So I ain't got to work a thousand hours of overtime because God just hooks me up. I, I just get hooked up. How many want to hook up from God in 2022? How many want to tend and not toil in 2022? The Spirit of the Lord says many of you have been toiling. Many of you have been trying to make it work in your own power. But come this year, if you just act in obedience, if you just trust me, if you just walk in the things I have told you, I will help you tend. The Spirit of the Lord says, I will not let you fail. And the reason why God will not let you fail is because it's not your name on the line, it's my name on the line. I want you to hear me this morning. God's name is on the line. And if no one else can represent his name, can protect his name, it's him. So how many of y'all are just committed? I'm just going to attend God. I'm just going to trust you. I'm just going to walk in the things you said to walk in. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we repent for toiling in our own work. We repent, oh God, for not trusting you. We repent, oh God, for saying, I got to make it work. But Father, it's by your power that we're able to succeed. It's you that make us the head and not the tail. It's you that say we are above and not beneath. So we will walk out and be who you called us to be. In the name of Jesus. So Father, we open our hearts and our minds this morning to say, God, tell us what to do. Even down to the most minute things, oh God, we say, God, instruct us and guide us and lead us in what you want us to do. And we will give you a fresh yes that we will do what you've asked in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to worship the Lord. Begin to bless him. We thank you, God. No longer will we toil for your blessings. No longer will we toil in our own strength. But we rely on your strength. For your strength is made perfect. Your strength is made perfect. Your strength is made perfect in our times of weakness. And we will walk in your strength in Jesus' name. Come on and exalt him. Come on and exalt him. Exalt him. Exalt him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Well, welcome to 2022 at the wreck. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just so glad that you are here. We're glad that you're in the house of God on the first Sunday of the year. Amen. So we want to welcome all of our first-time visitors, even those online. If you're worshiping with us online for the first time, we want to say we love you. Thank you. We don't take it for granted that you are worshiping with us online. And to all our members that's worshiping online, God bless you. We thank God for you. Come on, let's give it up for them. Hallelujah. So any first-time visitors in the house, that's in the house, amen. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome to the wreck. You're going to receive just a little card, and we just ask that you fill it out just so we can get to know you better. And we just thank God for you worshiping with us today, okay? Amen. Are we ready to get back into some more worship? Ain't this worship team awesome? Isn't this worship team awesome? We thank God for them. So we would say to in your home, don't just sit there and like, well, I'm just watching it online. Get involved. Your home can become the altar of God. And the very presence of God that is in this building can come right to your home. So is that all right? So we're just going to worship the Lord some more, and then our pastor is going to come after that. Amen? Hallelujah. We're just going to sing how great God is. How great God is. How great he is. God, how great you are, how great, how great you Telling, telling the earth how great you are, and we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising and falling at your word. And we are responding to your love. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Sing my So great. Rising, 
and all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing how great. Say you're the name, you're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Let's sing it again without the music. You are, you are worthy of all praise. Cause you're so deserving. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great are you, Lord? We want everybody to see how great you are. So come show the unbelievers and the believers how great you are. Oh, how great are you, Lord? We need the nation 
eyes to see how great are your works. We want the nations to hear your name and believe that you are God. How great you are. How great is your name. Your name is above all names. In all ways, there is nothing too great for you. Because you are God. How great you are. Everybody sing. How great. above every name. God, forgive us for ever trying to make our names great. It's your name. It's your name. Let that really be the cry of your heart. It's your name. Jesus, we come this morning humbling ourselves unto you. God, your name is greater than every name. And God, we don't come that they may see how great we are. Uh, but we desire the world to see how great you really are. Can God trust you with this greatness? Come on. Jesus, we bless you. Make us people that the world can see how great you are. Can anybody worship a great God this morning? Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Come on. God, we worship you. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Have anybody found him to be a great God? How great you are. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you, King of kings. Lord of lords, we take the top of our year and just give you glory. We just give you glory. We just magnify you. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are and what you've done. We glorify you. Come on, just glorify him. Glorify him. Hallelujah. There's so much victory. Come on. In your praise, God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, 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 we worship you. Come on, I know it's snowing outside, but we worship you, we worship you. Come on, we worship you, King. We magnify you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Come on. We magnify you, Lord. We worship you. We magnify you, King. We glorify you, Lord. Ha. We bless you, G. Make this place sound like heaven. We worship you. We worship you. Fill your living room with this glory. Come on. We worship you, King. We magnify you. Oh, we bless you, Lord of Lords. We glorify you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Come on. We worship you. We worship you. Let worship fill your lungs. Come on. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for your grace. Your grace. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace. Oh, your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. We're here because of your grace. Hey, we're saved by your grace. Come on. We're saved. Hey, it's only because of your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace. Your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace. Oh, your grace and your mercy. Oh, your grace and mercy. 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 Grace and mercy, 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 grace and mercy. Declare it, declare it, grace and mercy over your children. Grace and mercy over the next season. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy over your life. Grace and mercy over your body. Grace and mercy. Grace and over your household. Hey, grace and mercy. 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 Going into the next season. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. When you march out of your house every morning, you ought to declare grace and mercy. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, grace, great, 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 grace, 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 great, grace, grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. You gonna need it, I'm telling you. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Bless him for his grace. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all just bless him for his grace. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Anybody just celebrate his grace. Hallelujah. 
Anybody seen his grace, giving you what you know you didn't deserve? God, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for your mercy, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of y'all hear that grace. Come on now. We bless you, Lord. Anybody know what it's like? For God to give you stuff you don't deserve. Come on. Anybody know what his mercy is like? My daddy used to say, I'm in the should have been dead crowd. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But God kept you. So God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace. you to do it. <laughs> Some of us are used to things being hard, but not when you're walking in his grace. I've graced you to do it. I've graced you to do it. You're going to walk in because of my grace. Come on. The door's going to be open because of my grace. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a call this morning. I got a call yesterday. Ruffin was taking his wife to the hospital. It was probably somewhere between about 12 and 12.30, somewhere in there. And about 4 o'clock, they came on my heart, and I said, let me call and check on baby Rain, see what she doing inside the womb. And when Ruffin picked up the phone, he hit FaceTime. He said, Pastor T, you always know when to call. I said, what? He flipped the phone and showed me a baby. Now, if any of y'all ever been in labor, come on now. Some of us stayed in 10 hours, 12 hours, 13 hours. Listen. And Kiva called me this morning. I talked to her this morning. She said, Pastor T, Ruffin almost had to deliver the baby. Because when she came, I wasn't even pushing. When I was riding, God said, that's grace. You ain't even going to have to push. Come on now. The baby, I can rebosa. God said, grace has already hit the house. Come on. What should have took 12 hours to take three? Come on. You are burnt out something you ain't even pushing for yet. Somebody say grace. My husband went out last night, and I thought I had tickets or coupons for something. And when I looked at it, both of them were expired. And so I put them back in my purse. I said, baby, this stuff expired, whatever, you know. He said, well, ask anyway. <laughs> I said, ask anyway, the stuff expired. He said, ask anyway. We didn't even have to ask almost. Soon as I pulled it out, my husband said, hey, man, these are man said, oh, no, you good. I'll take it. My husband looked at me and said, Grace, come on now. The thing that's been expired, come on. The thing you thought was over for you. I'm talking about Grace, 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 Grace. Ain't no way I would have asked that if he wasn't with me. Because when I looked at the thing, it said it's over. Come on now. He said, the thing say it's over, but I'm going to need you to ask anyway. Come on. Don't be afraid to ask. For the thing that you believe is over, come on now, it's called grace. 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 Hey. Y'all go sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. I know I'm supposed to do stuff before I preach. Come on. Happy New Year, y'all. Happy New Year, y'all. Hallelujah. So I'm 
some of y'all in the house, y'all. These are the brave people that's in the house this morning. Got here by his grace, amen. And so some say it's sleeping outside. Some of us been here so long this morning, we don't even know, amen. <laughs> y'all hadn't have told us, we wouldn't know. And so I just, can y'all sit at the seats back there for me? Thank you. Happy New Year, all of y'all online. I just bless God for you. Thank God for what he's doing in this season. And I'm just, I'm going to, well, let's do this. Let's give before I go into this. Just because I want y'all to be in front of me. I'm so excited about what he's doing. So humbled by what he's doing. So grateful to where God called us to be. Just on taking the things for granted. You're alive in this season. You're under his grace and his mercy. So it's a spirit of gratitude. Just honor him for what he's doing. And just let him in this moment show you what he wants to do through you. What he's gracing you to do in his kingdom and for his glory. Let him just show it. God, show us even now what you're gracing us to do in this next season. Marcus, even as I was just praying and worshiping, with my hand laid on you this morning, I could see you going to another nation. I've never heard that over your life before, but there's something in the work of nations and missions that God is going to do through you. So God, I thank you. Humble yourself under his mighty hand. And he's going to do some things you never even dreamed of. We're having a man of God come here um, on the 16th of January. We've been supporting them for over a year now. We always talk about it, Singapore. He sent me a testimony um, last week and he said, he sent me all these photos, and I meant to send them to the media team to get them up. But he began to talk to me about all the souls that had been saved, even over the Christmas holidays. And he talked about how Muslims, how they were seeing Muslims get saved in these nations. And he said, I want the Rick to understand that you're very much a part of this journey. And he said he would be in the United States for the next 30 days. He'll be at Epic next week. And he'll be here for 30 days, and he's going to come minister to us on the 16th. He arrives here on the 15th. And when I got the message from him, I mean, he does some major things. Like, he puts his life online for the gospel. And I just believe that even in his coming, God is going to open up some doors for some of you in this house to go to the nations and go to places. We've sent our money, and now I believe we're going to start sending people. Anybody excited about going to the world? Amen. And so I talked to Apostle Axel. I said, um, you know, though I support his ministry, I'm not familiar with him personally, and I'm very careful about what I bring in the house. Apostle Axel said, you can definitely trust him to come. I've been fathering him for over 20 years. And so he's coming, and I'm just humbled that he even desires to. Amen. And so I'm excited. And so y'all get ready. It'll be two weeks from now. Um, he's going to come, and he's going to bless us. But even as I had laid my hand on you, God says I have something from for him. 
and he's going to go to other nations. And I know sometimes we don't think like that. I think your baby girl getting ready to. Amen. And so God's going to open up doors. And me and my husband, even the other day, we were speaking about you. And we said, DeMarcus is a funny man, but he's almost anointed to hold certain things. I said, and I'm going to get with him because there's some things I want to see you do with your gifting. You have a gift. It's a bona fide. It's anointing. And what's hard for other people, the anointing in God's grace will make easy for you. Amen. And then I can see uh, just right off the bat, the Holy Spirit. I can see Connie. Y'all saw she did something online the other day that was just tremendous in gifting. <laughs> tremendous in gifting. And I'm telling you, as you trust God and as you link arms with your husband and as you link arms and as y'all trust God again, just go back again like God told the fishermen. Go back and put your nets out again. God is going to far exceed anything you could have ever dreamed of. But this time, don't tell God, no, 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 no. Let him bless you. When he starts to bless you this time, lift your hands and say, it's because of his grace. It ain't because of the gift. The gift comes by his grace. God, we thank you in this house. Can anybody give him glory? Can anybody give him glory? I just want to talk. Oh, what am I supposed to be doing? Amen. I'm just in a vein. Like, Lord, I'm excited. Let me do this. I'm going to talk about offering. but I mean, we'll do offering at the end. I know Sonya watching me. She's going to kill me if I don't. So y'all don't let me forget, okay? We'll do it at the end. Some of us are going to Epic this week. <laughs> Y'all pray for us. It's going to be such a powerful grace on that place. I cannot wait. And so it's about 17 of us going. So I want y'all to pray for us this week. Amen. I talked to an apostle the other day, and I was talking to him about establishing some people just in the house this year and what I wanted to do. And he said, well, I'm going to let you decide on that. And, you know, I'm going to let you do all of that. He said, but what I do want to do is lay my hand on Pastor Mark Crawford. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he said, I want to ordain him um, this week to walk in the pastoral, just ordain him into that pastoral anointing. I was like, oh, wow. I said, you want me, I, you want him to call you? He said, no, I knew the first time I ever met him who he was. And so we good on that. And so one of the days while we're at Epic, I don't know which day, uh, my husband will be getting ordained. Yeah! yeah. And so I'm grateful. I'm just grateful to God for the humility that's on this man of God. He's teaching me so much about humility and just knowing who you are and walking in it. And so... Anyway, let us go. I'm just, I felt so rushed the other night. Y'all had me all rushed. Amen. Because I ain't have, I said I had none of my safety nets. I didn't have my mic. I didn't have my pulpit. You don't even realize how you rely on some of this stuff. What my little microphone anyway? <laughs> and so I got to get used to it real talk because it just was not comfortable for me. It was out of my comfort zone. Where is it? Oh, in the office. Where's my, no. So anyway, um, it was just different for me. And I said, I felt so rushed. They said, you didn't seem rushed. But I really, really want to make sure we have an understanding because um, God has really put this on me about his grace. And so I explained to you that mercy is a thing that God keeps you from. And grace is a thing that he gives to you, neither you deserve, right? So so basically, my husband and I, and Carter, we were in the back, and we were talking about Job, right? We said, so God...
putting, uh, not Job, Jonah, Jonah. So God putting Jonah in the well instead of killing him was mercy. God giving Jonah the assignment and the grace to still, God still allowing Jonah to do the assignment that Jonah had abandoned was grace, right? And so God will keep you from things. Y'all know how you were at the club and they start shooting as soon as you left. That's mercy. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so just some things, things when God do things that you don't deserve, you, you, you never thought you, he opens doors and you know you wasn't qualified. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When he does those kind of things, those are his grace. And so I really want to talk to you about it because this world and our country and different places are about to experience some things and you are going to need the grace of God. You're going to need his mercy, but I'm telling you, he's going to have a lot of grace on his remedy in this season and so it's kind of like um, and that's what I want to talk about just real quick is grace in this season Holy Spirit minister this word through me as only you can we ask that you would give us clarity and understanding today in the name of Jesus Christ amen listen I want to go real quick to Psalms 91 I'm probably going to go back over every scripture that I went over on um, the other night but I'm also going to add some I think I'm going to ask uh, my husband and Carter to come share a little bit, too. We were having a discussion. I'm like, let's have a little discussion, right? So anyway, in the Bible, in Psalms 91, in verse 7, it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but none shall come nigh thee. And so what I want to tell you is, even though we're walking into seasons where you're going to see other um variants and different things like that, that God, when you're walking under his grace, you're going to have a different level of grace this season. Even, even some of the things that God told me is that we're going to see many places closing, but I'm telling y'all now, unless I told my husband, I don't care who gets sick. We staying open this time. I'm not going back and forth with that stuff. deserve salvation. Did anybody do anything? I'm talking about if you know the kind of sinner you was, did anybody do anything to receive salvation? No, it was absolutely by his grace. And it says, this is, it, it, you were saved through faith, but by grace. And it says, and this is not from yourselves. Listen, it is a gift from God. Grace is a gift from God, not by your works. This is why some of us get caught up because we say, I've done nothing to deserve it. And here's another issue. If you start taking grace and think that it's because of you, you're going to run into some issues. Example, your business is booming. God's grace is on you. He's giving you favor. The Bible says that he would even give us favor amongst kings. If you're not careful, you will begin to take the success and think that it's about your work. Come on now. And and you'll start taking glory for what grace has given you. And you have to be careful because God says he gives grace to who? The humble. The word of God says he gives grace to the humble. So don't take what grace has given you and become prideful with it because, honey, grace will lift. Anybody that's seen grace lift before? Grace will lift. He said grace is a gift. And so, so when people ask you about it, say it's because of his grace. It's not by your work. So that no man can do what? No man can boast. I'm going to do it by my grace because, see, if you were able to do it by your work, then you get to boast on you. And that's what we got to be careful about. Why? Because the whole world has given us platforms where we can boast. 
And if you ain't careful, you will begin. Because listen now, I'm telling you, it's something in us, especially with our rejective selves, that love the likes and the comments and the love and the acceptance of other people. But if you don't understand that it's by grace, you will get caught up in that and you will begin to boast on you. But the Bible says that I ain't done it by your work. Your work ain't good enough. I've done it by my grace and my grace is a gift. A gift is something that I give you that you have not earned. Listen, and I've done it like this because if you did it by your works, you will begin to boast. He said, for we are God's handiwork created in Jesus Christ to do good works. We were created to do good works, honey. If you ain't doing good works, something wrong because you were created by you were created by God in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So even the thing that God has graced you to do, he prepared, he prepared it for you before you ever hit the earth. So it ain't even about you. It ain't about your degree. It ain't about your education. It's because God has graced you. I'm telling you, this next season of favor is going to be about his grace going to be about his grace now. And so then I talked to you. I came out of Luke 5. And I talked about when they had fished all night. And Jesus said, come on now. Lunch on out to in the deep. <laughs> and they were like, oh, God, you don't need, you, you weren't here, Jesus. See what the problem was. You weren't here to see. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know when Pastor Tika said, come on, come on, do And you like, man, you ain't see me the last time fall on my face. You don't understand. Like, everybody got to see me, you know. And so that, that, that's a humbling thing, you know. And so, but God said, that's okay. I want you to go back again this time and do the thing that did not work last time. The thing that did not work last time is going to work for some of you this time. Why? Because God this time is telling you to do it. And so when, when, when God allowed them to do it, who was it? It was Peter that came back and said, hold on, he was like, let me just read it. I haven't left my glasses somewhere. He said, we've worked hard all night. I want to read it. He said, he told Peter, he said, put out in the deep water and let your nets down for the catch. And Peter said, you don't understand, master. We worked all night and ain't caught nothing. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And I talked about that. Not wanting to do it because you failed last time, but saying, lifting your hands and said, because you said so, I will, right? Some of y'all came up. I said, if you will give your God, if you will give God because you said so, I will come to the altar. And so God's going to ask you to do some things in this season that you don't feel deserving of. And you don't even feel qualified for. But, and, but he needs you to say, God, because you said so, I will. And it was Peter that fell at Jesus' feet when they, when they put the net down and, and they did what God said. They did what Jesus said. The people that had been fishing all night all of a sudden came up with such a large amount of fish that their nets began to break. And Peter, seeing this, fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me because I'm a sinful man. So some of us we talked about I've been telling God what we can't do because of what we would be in in the last season or even because of what we are now. And God say, I'm doing this because of me and for my glory, not because of who you are, who you've been. He told Peter, he said, listen, now what I've shown you now, you're about to be fishers of men. And so God has called some of us to do kingdom work that we don't feel qualified for, but he's asking you to do it, and he's looking for people that say, God, because you said so, I will. And so because I don't want us to get confused, I want us to go over to Romans. It's 6 and 1. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? So when I say God going to do what he going to do in spite of you, 
Some of y'all think I can keep on sinning and God just going to give me grace. Well, let me go and help you with this scripture. I'm talking about grace for the humble, grace to, for those who have humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God. I'm telling you now. Grace for those that will escape the wrath that is coming because of his grace, because they've stayed in God even when a season got tough. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When pandemic came and they wanted to sin because it got lonely in their house, they said, God, I'll continue to obey them. I'm talking about grace for those that love him, grace for those that are called according to his purpose. So Romans 6 and 1, for those of y'all that want to abuse God's grace, let me help you. The Bible in Romans 6 and 1 said, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning because we got grace? <laughs> he said, by no means. Come on now. We are those who have died to sin. We ain't even talking about folk that's still sinning because the people we talking about have died to sin. Come on. When you sin, you can't hardly sleep at night. These are the people I'm talking about. When you sin, you can't even hardly think straight. We were sitting here the other day and I said something. It was true, but I said it. Because everything that's true, you don't need to say it out your mouth. Help Pastor T. When you're a truth teller and blunt, as they call it, that get a little hard to do. But we were talking, and I felt really convicted by it. And I had to repent on the spot. Y'all, I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. True or not. Right? Because when you sin, when you love God, grace or not, sin ain't cool with you. See, some of us ain't, I'm telling you now, if sin cool with you, you probably ain't saved. And you sure enough ain't filled with the whole. The Holy Ghost will wear you out. Pride will wear you out. Because I can't get prideful because it's only by his grace. And he said, no, 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 no. You ain't got grace so you can keep on sinning. Y'all know what they say. Go and do it and ask God to forgive you. And baby, that's for kindergarten. That's stuff we said when we was in third grade. And even and that ain't even right for a third grader. Amen. So I want us to be real careful about that. But we're going to need his grace in this next season. So, Pastor T, if you ain't talking about the grace of us that want to sin and live how we want to live, who are you talking about the grace for? I had never seen this scripture, but I heard my brother preach it the other night. And it's in Romans 11. It says, It's talking about when Elijah, you remember Elijah called fire down from heaven. And then he went hidden, he went hiding because Jezebel sent a threat after him. And he was basically like, Lord, ain't nobody out here that love me but you. And God told him, verse 4, he said, I have reserved for myself 7,000 that have not died. <laughs> God, see, when you serving God, you can start to feel lonely. But God said, oh, baby, I got some more people that really love me for real. He said, so too, even as I had chosen a remnant in that season, so too at this present time, there's a remnant that has been chosen by what? Grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. You were even chosen by grace. And if it's by your works, then it ain't by grace. Anybody says, man, forget the bad works. I want the grace. I want the grace to do the work. Because now faith by work, dead, don't go quit your job either. <laughs> Some of y'all go quit tomorrow. I'm just going to roll off grace, whatever. You better obey God. And so this is for the remnant. 
that I'm talking to. Because when calamity fills the world, there's going to be a remnant that say, I love Jesus. God, I trust you. God, I'm rolling with you. God, I believe you. God, I'm going to continue to do what you said do. God, I will not stop. I will not hide under my bed in fear. I'm the remnant. Come on now. Anybody a part of the remnant that say, Jesus, I really do love you? <laughs> so, talking to a people that are going to roll by his grace. Where my two guys at? Come on, young. Come on, Carter. Give me two microphones real quick. So I wrote this. I said, some examples of grace is receiving what you do not deserve. Another example of grace is being able to do something that you should not be able to do. Anybody ever had grace you knew you didn't qualify? It's just grace, y'all. So when you receive his grace, make sure you give him glory. And God is looking for people this season that won't boast in themselves. But they'll know it's by his grace. Intercessors, you need to be decreeing and declaring grace. Even before we walk out, grace, grace, grace. Listen. I have a brother-in-law. I would let my husband tell this, but he's going to take too long. <laughs> he's so excited about the story. I have a brother-in-law. He calls himself the walk-on coach. Said he had a normal job. He would work eight hours a day, and he would go and walk on and volunteer. First started volunteering at high school to coach, right? He wanted to tell it so bad. I ain't going to let him coach. He's so excited about it. He just be crying and everything. But he's watched God's hand. Yeah. And he started volunteering at high school. He said at Tresman High and then Westwood High, right? Nesbitt and Cordova High. Then he went on and volunteered at University of Memphis. He said, I, I would change clothes. I would sleep three hours, and I would change clothes in the bathroom in my car to go volunteer to be a coach. From there, they made him like a high school recruiter. Am I right? From there, Coach, what's his name? Norvell took him to Florida with him. He stayed there about a year. Kentucky called him. Long story short, he just got hired as the running back coach for University of Oregon. And I hear that's a major deal. I don't know nothing about University of Oregon or what that means, big. But I hear it's big, big money. But he said, Tara, I started out volunteering. He said, I had people tell me, you come talk to me when you become a real coach. He said, and I've had to look those people in their face. And he said, one of them, I walked in his face, and I wouldn't hardly speak to him. He said, but God convicted me. So you go back, and you treat him like a brother. He said, so I walked all the way around the field just so I could treat him right. And I told my husband, I said, here's the thing that I've seen on Carlos's life, grace. I said, but I believe it's because of his humility. I said, because I watch him on platforms that other folk boast in themselves. And every post he makes is boasting on the Lord. Every one. He gets up every morning online and does devotionals for kids and things like that. And people wonder how he's been able to do what he's been able to do. He calls himself the walk-on coach because then nobody hired him. He volunteered his time. But the grace of God has happened so quick. He just left with no avail. He didn't had two other calls since then. And my husband said every interview, all they talk about is his character and integrity. They don't talk about his coaching, Marcus. They talk about his character and his integrity. 
I said, but but everything he does, every step of the way, he boasts on the Lord. And when you boast on the Lord, isn't it just like the Lord to take you higher? Because he wants you to boast on him to more people and more people and more people and more people. He keep giving you a platform. If you boast on him down here, he'll keep giving you a higher platform by his grace. I ain't do nothing to deserve it. They call me. <laughs> I didn't do nothing to deserve it. I was a high school recruiter when nobody even recognizing me. Knew I was doing what other coaches would do, but didn't need the glory for it. So I'm doing what people do and letting them take the glory. <laughs> It's great. So I asked my brothers. My husband is my husband and my brother. Y'all don't get that. <laughs> He's my husband and my brother. I be I be talking to him about the word. He's my brother in Christ. We rapping. And so I asked him, what kind of I was oh we were riding and I said, Let us well have a little discussion. They can't see y'all today. <laughs> it ain't gonna take but a minute. Y'all could just stand on each side real quick. I was asking my husband this morning on the way here. I said, Give me some examples of people that experience God's grace. He was like, Whoa, who didn't? You know. And so I just want them to give y'all some quick examples so you can hear from more than me. And so come on over here so they can see you in the camera. <laughs> Okay, so we were just discussing. We talked about some people that you could see God's grace through, and I talked to them about giving some personal examples because sometimes you just need to hear from other people and know it just ain't on Pastor T's life. Y'all know what I'm saying? So, Baby Bell, what? Um, give me some examples in the scripture of God's grace that you had. I think one of them, uh, you just kind of used it about Peter, but there's another example in, uh, in John after uh, Jesus had resurrected, the disciples decided to go fishing, and they was out toiling, and they didn't catch anything, mm -hmm. and then Jesus came ashore, and they didn't know exactly who he was, and he told them to cast a net on the other side, mm -hmm. and then once they did that, they, they was like, who is that? They didn't know who he was, and then when they threw it to the other side, the boat tilted mm -hmm. because of the fish they caught and they looked up at me and say that's the master. They knew it right then and there it was the Lord. Mm -hmm. Something else? <laughs> yeah, because that ain't the one we talked okay, about. Well, that's one of them. That's okay, that's, that's one of them. And another was, um, what we talked about. I uh, think Noah was one. Noah, yes. Yes, when God basically was judging the world, yeah. he saw fit just to save Noah and his family. Yes. To carry on after the water proceeded, yeah. so just just decisions to uh, use Noah and his family to uh, continue on was an uh, example of His grace. And that's what I think the kind of grace we're about to experience is a grace when there's great calamity going around, mm -hmm. and God's grace still. What's an example of grace in your life? Uh, I think one thing we was talking about the other day. So I was out walking, right, mm -hmm. walking around uh, the lake, and then. Um, and as I was walking, God just kind of showed me, like, there are things in life that are better. Mm -hmm. But then there are things in life that are a lot worse. But, but when I could just walk around with the peace, mm -hmm. um, I just like, God, you know, I don't, what did I do to deserve this? Right. You know, growing up, you know, down in Haven or whatever. <laughs> when I say I can look at my driveway and I'm looking at Valley Forge, uh -huh. now I'm walking around and I'm looking at ducks and squirrels and <laughs> planes and, you know, so it's just different. So I'm just like, you know, like, as I'm walking, I just begin to weep, you know, just like, like, God, I, I didn't do anything to deserve this, but I'm just so grateful and so humble. Like, I, I actually live here. Like, this is where I live, you know. Right. So it was just, it was just so surreal to me. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, and I called my husband. No, my husband called me. He said, baby. I said, what's up? He said, you know what? I said, what? He said, I'm just happy. <laughs> he said, um, it's a coach that we have. He said, El called me and asked me how I was doing. He said, I was walking. He said, El, I'm just happy. 
Like I'm walking in things I don't deserve, you know. I got I got a home I don't deserve, a wife I love. I just it's just good to have peace and happiness. Yeah. And you know, I stopped in my tracks and I I stopped after I talked to him about an hour later I was sitting with God and I said, God, sometimes we don't take our time. We so busy worry about what's next and what's coming and what we trying to attain. So we don't take our time just to be content and thank God for right now. Yeah. Woo! So just to hear somebody say, I'm just happy and blessed right now. Amen. Can anybody be content with where they are right now? Woo! Just, Lord, I'm blessed right now. I'm happy right now. And it just humbled me to say, because I'm such a person that's always looking to the future. It's almost like God used him to stop me in my tracks and said, Lord, I just thank you for right now. So, Carter, give me an example of God's grace in your life. Example of God's grace in my life. Um, a couple of years ago, well, a couple, yeah, a couple of years ago, I pretty much found myself homeless. I had to leave the place I was staying kind of very abruptly, and I was in my car, and only a few people knew it. But a few years from that, just through my own mistakes, I ended up losing the apartment I have. And if any of y'all know, if you owe an apartment debt, it's hard to get an apartment anywhere else. Yeah. Like they'll instantly turn you down and send you back to pay that debt. So um, just kind of was staying from place to place and you know doing that. And one Sunday I was up here speaking and Crystal said, hey, I know somebody that may have a place in Midtown that you can come stay. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I was like, man, there's no way I'm gonna get this spot. Like she gonna run my credit. I'm just being honest. She's going to run my credit. She's going to see that eviction. It's, it's a wrap. And long story short, when I talked to her, she's like, oh, yeah, just, you know, just come on and just come on and, and come see it. And I said, okay, I came and see it. I said, well, I'll be very honest with you. Here's where I am. This is what my credit looks like, you know, X, Y, Z. She said, oh, that, that don't matter. Just, just come on and uh, you can have the apartment. I said, well, I don't know when I'll be able to pay. The, oh, that don't really matter. Just come on in. <laughs> and when she sent me the paperwork, the paperwork was, she said, oh, this is just a formality just to have it on file. And I said, well, let me tell you again, you know my credit is. <laughs> She's like, don't worry about that. And I've been staying there almost two years now. And she has been just so kind. And every time I think about it, I'm like, God, you provided me a place with no effort. With no effort. Like, like I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to jump through hoops. I didn't have to go get my credit fixed. I didn't have to go do all this kind of stuff in my own work. It just happened. And even now, like, I'm like, hey, I'm traveling. You know, I'm, I'm working out of town. You know, I, you know, how can I send the rent to you? Oh, don't worry about it, baby. Just, just pay it when you come back. And I've never had a landlord like that. So it's just a no effort thing. Because I thought I would have to do all this work to try to get a spot. Like, But I'm just telling you, man, God will put the right people at the right time if you're just obedient. And the last thing is, because it's an older home, it's a, it's a quadplex. So a lot of things I'm used to, like, like floors and a lot of counter space and stuff like that. Caught a bougie, y'all. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I like the finer things in life. <laughs> but but they don't get me wrong, it's a nice place, but I had to get used to that. So every time a spirit of complaining would come on me. Yes, come on. God would show me my car. Yeah, come on, come on. And he said, you could be staying in your car. <laughs> And I stopped, and I said, God, I thank you. <laughs> Matter of fact, I stopped moving. I said, I'm going to make some counter space up in here because, God, I thank you. Thank you. Because I'm going to be standing in my car. Amen. So that's a great example for me. Amen. Amen. Y'all thank y'all. When God does what you do not deserve, when God gives, what you never dreamed of. When God gives you what you didn't even apply for, 
is growing. I could go on and on about his grace. Just why they talking, you know, why my husband giving out the story, I can think, but I'm just like, oh. I'm just even looking back over the last year. I ask you to think about his grace and how he's graced you and how he's blessed you. We could just spend the first Sunday of the year just giving him glory. Sometimes you just have to make a decision and just decide I watched my daughter get married this year at almost 32. I had her when I was 16 years old. We hung up from Kiva and Ruffin this morning. And I said, baby, that's how it's supposed to be done. It's so beautiful to see two people married, husband and wife, giving birth to a baby. And watching God give you opportunity to be a part of the entire process is just his grace. And I look at my baby at 32 and I had her at 16 and that'll be her story. She'll be very much married and having her first baby. And I lived so much of my life afraid that she would make my mistake, but it's grace. And when her husband proposed, all I asked God, God, I want to be able to get this baby, the wedding she always dreamed about. And I told her the whole time, I said, I want you to be like Cinderella. And when she walked down that aisle, I had just got married and we spent a lot of money. My husband and wife didn't complain. When I looked on that thing, my baby was walking it down looking like Cinderella, who had a 16-year-old mother. It's just his grace. When I think about even as a pastor, I was walking for over a year, catching Ubers to church. God has done something I can never boast. When you come from nothing, you think you got to start and work your way up. His grace. Never in a million years did I think I deserved to be loved unconditionally. Love had been based on condition. But it's grace. I didn't even see my high school graduation. But I had a high school graduate this year, and my baby girl graduated from college. Grace. She didn't just graduate, she had graduated on time. And don't know, owe nobody walking out of school. Grace. Oh, it's grace. 
telling you this year. You're about to walk under grace and faith that you do not deserve. And it's going to bring tears to your eyes because you ain't going to almost want to resist it. Like Peter, uh -uh, I'm a sinful man. But I'm going to ask you this time, don't, res don't resist his grace. Can you stand? God, we thank you for your grace. For some of y'all, I hear God saying, go back and have the conversation again. <laughs> grace. God, I thank you for your grace. Jesus, we bless you first for your mercy. We are devil in the should have been dead club. Should have been addicted club. Should have been homeless club. God, but we thank you. God, we thank you. Some of us, even when we saw our children, you gave us grace, Jesus. God, we thank you for grace, not only the grace you've already given us, but God, we thank you for grace for the next season. The season that we're about to walk in, Lord God. And we say yes to your grace. God, we won't abandon your grace, nor will we reject it. God, we lift our hands. Lift your hands now and just receive the grace of God. Lift your hands and receive, God. We receive, we receive, we receive, we receive your grace. We receive your grace. A double portion of your grace. God, we thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for grace to do what we do not have grace to do. Grace to do what we do not know how to do. God, we bless you now. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, dear God, for the places you're going to take us this year. God, we thank you for grace on the wreck this year. God, we thank you for grace on redeemed this year. God, we thank you that our nets are breaking this year. God, we give you glory for it. God, we thank you that you can trust us with it. God, we will never boast, Lord God, on our works, but we will always give you glory. We give you glory for what you're about to do. God, we give you glory, Jesus. We thank you. We love you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you higher. Thank you for your grace. If you knew what God was about to do, you would give him glory. Glory. Connie, come here real quick.
just want us to pray grace over them. Some stuff about to happen so fast, and we understand that place. So we just bless you. God, I thank you, oh my God. Here's what I hear. Go pick out your home. If it does not have double ovens, it ain't yours. Come on. We thank you for the kitchen space. I see you almost given up on it, but here's what God did for us, and my husband can tell you. Until we picked the spot and made up our mind, nothing became open. As soon as we've decided this is our neighborhood, God opened up the door. So God, I thank you now. I hear God saying, go back now. Go back and qualify again. Come on, go back and do it again. She called robo 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 Go back again. Go back again. God, I thank you. I'm about to give you some stuff you're gonna be very proud of. He colobo sunda robosia. He carabo sian de lebe kindo robosia. Link your hands. I hear you saying, even in your union, oh my God, I hear you saying, even in your union, we've never experienced this before. There's some things, even in marriage, you've never experienced before. God, I thank you for the oneness. God, I thank you for the oneness. God, I thank you for the friendship. Oh, my God. God, I thank you, Jesus. And here's what I see. I see God saying this love that I'm going to fill your home with. I'm talking about your new home. Listen, it ain't just for your nieces and nephews and your grandchildren. You're going to begin to invite people over and they're going to begin to experience the glory and the grace that's on your life. God, I thank you. God said, if you receive it, I'll give it to you. Y'all going to be inviting people over like you never did before. God, I thank you. I thank you. God, we thank you and we bless them and we we blow your grace upon them. Give God. 
God, the old one. Go write a new one. God, I thank you, G. And write it together. A brand new dream. A brand new plan. Come on now. Erase the old. Don't even worry about the old one. Write brand new. And go bigger this time. Go bigger. Go bigger this time. Go bigger this time. Not the thing that take your work, but the thing that take his grace. Write a plan that take his grace. God, we thank you. Y'all bless God. Let's go! Woo! Woo! God bless. Woo! Ah! Shikolobo sundorobo. Shindorobo shandelebe kindorobo sa. God, I thank you. I thank you. Come here, Sharita. I see you. God, I thank you for grace and mercy, God. It's like you're moving, but you're still moving out of fear. So, God, I thank you for the grace of God. It's almost like this toil that's over you. Like, God, I talk about toiling. God, I thank you, Lord God, that the toiling would cease. Can I hear God saying, don't do anything out of fear? Nothing out of desperation. Nothing out of desperation. I hear God saying, you are a daughter, and a daughter does not move out of desperation. She understands her daddy's love for her. Oh, 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 oh. I see contracts, baby girl. And I almost see the last business making you want to doubt this one. But if you open your arms to my grace, come on, grace. Here's what I want you to do right now, even in this moment. I want you to let go of the last business. Come on, just let it go. Grieve it right now. Let it go. As a matter of fact, not just the business, but the entire season. All of the loss. Come on. All of the loss, we leave it here now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Do y'all know why you still grieving one loss? You will block your thing for yourself from the next season grieving. Come on. Chikolamo Sunda Robosia. Come on. The business, the house, come on, the relationship, all of it. Chekorobo Sunday Rebekia. We come to court, cut the cord over the last thing that we may experience the new thing. Cut the cord. I come to sever your heart from it. Sever your I come to sever your heart from it. I come to sever your soul from it. Heke Rebesia. Sunday Robosia.